Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about default and rest parameters. We're also going to touch on the arguments parameter as well as a couple of other things. So, it should be a pretty good video. I'm pretty I'm pretty excited and I think I'm I think I'm ready to get started. But first, you need to check out our sponsor, which I always forget to say that. Darn it. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? Dev Mountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real world applications and get a job in the industry through Dev Mountain's career centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, Dev Mountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. Alright, so the thing with JavaScript is that there's no real concept of overloading. So when we create a function, such as this pow function, that is the function that will be called no matter how we invoke pow. So if we invoke pow like so, or if we invoke pow like so, it doesn't matter how many or what type of arguments we pass in, it will always execute this function right here, pow. So let's just see what happens when we run it like so. Let's do a refresh. The first one gives us one, and then the second one gives us one. That's because the first one is just going to start with one, and that's what's going to be returned. The second one, I think it's only really paying attention to the first two arguments here. Do a refresh, and we get 16. Yep, it seems I'm correct. So this is a potential issue because people that might be using your code as a library, or you who might be referencing a function, you might not exactly invoke it the way you expected it to be invoked when you created the function. Or we might be wanting to have multiple versions of the function, accepting different numbers of arguments, and so forth. So there's a lot of different flexibility things we need to concern ourselves with when it comes to JavaScript functions and the number of arguments passed in. So the first thing, let's talk about when we have less arguments passed in. What are we going to do to address that? Well, there's three things I got that could help with less arguments. But first, let's get rid of this, and now let's talk about the three possibilities. The first is to use default parameters. So for example, let's say if we don't pass in this y, we want it to default to 2 and square the number. So let's just pass in 3, and we just want it to square it, which will give us the value 9. Well, to do that, all we have to do is put y equals 2 up here in the parameters as a default parameter here. Now when we do a refresh, you can see we get the value 9. The second way is you can test the value of y inside of the function. So for example, we could say if y has the value undefined, then what we're going to do is we're just going to set the value of y to 2. This should work the same way, and we can get rid of that default parameter. Now we do a refresh, we still get the value 9. Either one of those will work, I prefer the first one. And now what about that third option I was telling you about? Well it actually serves the same purpose as number 2, it's just a different way that you might see it. So what this is going to look like is you can basically do a ternary operator by using the type of y, and if the type of it is undefined in strings, then if it's undefined we're going to return 2, otherwise we'll just keep whatever the value of y is. And this needs to be assigned to y. So this is obviously a lot more verbose than this version, so of the two I recommend this, but you might see this in older code. So let's just see if this works, let's get rid of that line, do a refresh, and you can see we still get the value 9. Ooh, so there's three options for you, I'm just going to stick with the obvious easy one, which is to use the default parameter there, get rid of this junk, and there you go. So that is the way you deal with less arguments than you need for all the parameters. The solution is to use defaults. Now what if you pass in too many arguments? So let's say we raise 3 to the third power, and then we pass in some other mumbo jumbo that we don't really know what it means, but someone passed it in just because. <laughs> well you can actually access this data inside of the function still. And the way you can do that is by adding another parameter here and using the three dots, so you create an ellipsis, and then you give it a name, so we could call it extra, for example. And I'm going to get rid of this default here. So now we have x, y, and then dot, 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 extra. And we can output extra inside of here to see what it contains. So we'll, we'll use extra just like a normal variable. You only need the three dots when you're defining the parameter there. Do a refresh, and you can see it contains 4, 6, 3, 4, which is actually all the extra stuff that we passed into this function. So when would something like this be useful? 
Well, if you're working with the power function, we don't need any of that extra stuff, so I'd probably just get rid of this here. And if someone passes in extra data, then don't worry about it, just ignore it, which is the default behavior. But there are certain times when you wanna create functions that accepts unlimited arguments passed in. So let's go through an example of that. Let's create a function down here, and we're gonna call this largest. And it's going to take one argument, but then it's going to have extra as another option. And you can name it whatever you want, that's up to you. And what this is going to do is it's going to look through all of the numbers and return the largest one. So we'll basically keep track of the largest using a variable, and we'll first assume that the x is the largest. Then we'll try to prove otherwise. So we'll do a for loop, and we'll go all the way up to extra dot length, and then i++. And then all we have to do is compare the extra value, whatever one we're on, to the largest, and if it's bigger, then replace largest. So we'll say if extra index i is greater than largest, what are we going to do? We're just going to set largest equal to extra of i, like so. And then once we're finally done with the loop, we can return the largest, and it's going to return the actual value, not the index. So it depends on what you want. If you want the value, you can do this. Otherwise, you can keep track of the index and return that. Now, instead of calling power, let's call this largest function and see what we get. We do a refresh, and we get six, which indeed is the largest variable value inside of this. Let's try another one. We put 30 at the beginning, we get 30. Maybe we put 45 at the end, and we get 45. And this is cool because we can put any number of arguments in here and it should work. So we can go up here and put 2000, 10, and so forth. Do refresh and you can see we get 2000. So we basically created a function that'll work with any number of arguments, very versatile, very cool. Now the other thing I wanted to talk about was implicit parameters. So what is an implicit parameter? Well, anytime we use the term implicit, it means behind the scenes or not explicitly stated. So when we have a function, there is implicit parameters that we can use that give us more information. So the first one is this. So we can console log this, and I'm going to call that function. So down here, I'm gonna call pow, and it should output this, which you can see is the window object. We're gonna get into this in the next video, so don't worry about it for right now, but one of the other implicit parameters is actually called arguments. So what you can do is you can do console.log, pass in arguments, and this is going to contain the argument data. So if you expand this, you can see index zero is three, index one is three which correlates to the arguments passed in. So this is similar to an array, but it's actually not quite an array. So you can work with it like it's an array, it works with indexes, but it's not going to have all of the capabilities of an array. You can convert it to an array if you want, but the only real time you're ever going to want to use this arguments is if you're working with legacy code and you don't have the capability to use the rest parameters here that I talked about earlier. So the recommended way is to do this, but anytime you need those implicit arguments, you can do that like so. And the other obvious benefit of using the rest parameters I talked about is that this is an actual array, so it's going to have all of the methods that you would expect it to have, unlike the arguments that we talked about earlier. So that's all I got for you guys in this video. In the next video, we're going to go into detail of what this means, and that'll be fun because that's a really big piece in JavaScript, and it's extremely important. So go check that out, and I'll see you in the next one and subscribe.